What's going on guys? Welcome to Serial and Midnight. My name is Heath and I'm glad you're here. This is the official YouTube channel of SerialAndMidnight.com and I want to get back to something that I've kind of gotten away from in the last couple of months and that's really shining a spotlight on some of the weird, rare, obscure, uh, interesting corners of my collection of the things that I'm interested in. Um, and a perfect example of this is the Atari Force comic from DC. Uh, this is a early to mid 80s series. This is actually Atari Force Volume 2, technically. But we'll talk all about it. Uh, I picked all these issues up at the Atlanta Comic Con recently, and uh, I've read them all. It's a complete self-contained run, and I thought that maybe we could just take them to a table uh, and we could go through the first issue, and I could kind of just tell you what I think about Atari Force, give you a little background on it, why I connect with it, and what I thought about this complete run. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's take it to the table. All right, guys, so here we are at the table. This is the Stack O Atari Force. I've taken the first issue out of the uh, the the sleeve there the protective the protective bag to uh, so we can go through it together and I can show you some of these covers too uh, I can't show you all of the covers because some of them have spoilers on them um, but like I love the so it's connected to Atari obviously it's Atari Force this guy has the Atari symbol on his chest this is his son so I will say this is volume two of Atari Force volume one of Atari Force were they were there were five issues of a mini comic that shipped inside Atari games and if you got them all they told kind of a loose story uh, they were written by Jerry Conway and Roy Thomas I believe they're actually getting reprinted in early 2019 uh, so that's very exciting uh, for like fans of this comic and for Atari fans or whatever but other than that and like the logo of um, on their, their chest. so like this was the this was one of the heroes from the original Atari Force, and this book, Volume Two, takes place a generation later, uh, and this is his son, and now he has like a revised, like a cooler, more swoosh uh, version of the Atari logo. Um, but like you could clearly tell, like this cover, they're chasing Star Wars, they're chasing Darth Vader, and other than the Atari name and the occasional logo, there's nothing really connecting it to. Uh, the Atari brand. I, I very much think that they were using the brand to uh, market this, to sell the book, um, which is fine. Uh, it works and it, it does have like that. Look, that is Star Wars. That's straight out of Star Wars. So let's go through the first issue while I'm talking. Um, but, you know, it's, it is branded Atari, but there's nothing really, it, it's not aged by Atari really. How about this Masters of the Universe model kit uh, ad from Monogram? That's fantastic. Um, so for volume two, for this volume, it's 20 issues and Jerry Conway, the co-creator, returns to write it. Jerry Conway uh, co-created The Punisher for Marvel. He was writing Spider-Man, when The Amazing Spider-Man, when uh, the death of Gwen Stacy occurred. And uh, he worked on, he's worked on so many things. He's a great creator. And he comes back for about half of this series. I think it's the first 13 issues as he's really at the wheel here. And the art is done by Jose Luis, is it Jose Luis Garcia Lopez? No, I'm, it's, I don't know that, I, sometimes I get that wrong. Yes, Jose, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. He's a Spanish creator. Uh, his art, art is fantastic. New Teen Titans, I think he did some stuff with Justice League. I, I could be wrong about Justice League, but he's one of those, uh, guys that I mean, people love his artwork and he also did about half of this series I think that the vision for this book was 13 issues maybe and then they saw that maybe they could give it a good coda and wrap things up with 20 unfortunately the book came out at the same time like this is 80 it's the end of 83 this is uh what does it say here this is January of 84 so this would have shipped in you know maybe late November December of 1983 and that is Unfortunately, very close to the comic book crash. The, I'm sorry, the video game crash of uh, of 1983. You know when Atari had been ruling the market, like revolutionized the video game industry, and then they pretty much went out of business, like almost overnight. And so this, whereas Atari had been um, seen as a you know the, like the name was like oh it's good brand recognition. I think it became an anchor for this title, like a, it dragged it down. But like I said, it doesn't really have anything to do, the, like the comic doesn't really have anything to do with Atari. Is this not straight out of uh, Return of the Jedi, Jabba's Palace? That's like Tatooine from Return of the Jedi and like, Etatuta. Um, or is it Etuta? 
Era wana wanga, pejaba no bala. Uh, but uh, so we have a colorful cast of characters. They are very cool. They're very diverse. Uh, some of them I like more than others. I never warmed up to this guy. His name's Babe. Uh, I never really warmed up to Babe. I thought it was kind of a tedious character. Basically, he's an infant, and his species, when they mature... Oh, my gosh. Okay. His species, when they mature, turns into, like, living mountains or, or something like that. Like, it's a, it's an okay concept, but I never warmed up to the character. Let's admire this for a second. NBC Saturday mornings. We get the jazz. It's got Smurfs, Incredible Hulk, uh, Spider-Man, His Amazing Friends, The Mr. T Show, Chipmunks, Thundar, The Barbarian, Shirt Tales, The Flintstones... What a great Saturday morning lineup. That's fantastic. Um, but as you can just see from the artwork here, like this is uh, this is mid '80s comics at its best. If you're if if you don't like stuff like that, I don't know that there's anything here that's going to convince you that this is cool. But uh, that like this makes me happy. This is like an episode. Actually, I'll say this is kind of like a season because there were 22. I'm sorry, there were 20 issues of this, and there's roughly usually 22 issues of a TV series per season. Uh, and so this kind of feels like a complete TV season or a series. Like it's a one season TV show. Kind of like that first season of Buck Rogers because we all know that they changed Buck Rogers pretty drastically for the second season. Battlestar Galactica is another one. It was a one season show. That, yes, there was Battlestar Galactica, uh, you know, Battlestar 1980, Galactica 1980. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. Like it, it's it's like kind of like a one and done, like a one season sci-fi show. It has a mission. It has a, uh, a goal. Uh, they get there pretty quickly, but they get there in ways that I don't necessarily like. It's kind of surprising, uh, and it gets a little dark from time to time. But that's it. We'll just look through the first issues because I don't want to spoil any of the story for you. If you're interested in it, I think it's really cool. Uh, what's on the back of this? Oh, Power Lords, you guys from Revel, Revel, Revel. I think that's how you say it. Um, so what's cool about it is that I think that they had a mission statement in mind. I think they had a 13 issue plan. They got there. I think they saw a way to wrap it up in seven more issues. I think that the sales were not great. Uh, what's interesting is that in the letters column in the back, they're pretty honest about what's happening. They're like, you know, yeah, we don't really know what we're doing with this. We're kind of finding it as we go. We have some great writing and we have great art, but we're kind of just figuring a lot of this out as we go. We don't really, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of refreshing when, when everything is now is like so PR based and like hype, 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 hype. This, this is the best comic you're ever going to read. But next month, that comic's going to be even better. Uh, it's kind of refreshing to see people who are just like, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to do our best on this. We're kind of new to it and we're going to give it our shot. Our best shot. These are the five issues of, uh, the original Atari Force and the games that they shipped with. So that's cool. Um, but I would like to recommend Atari Force. I think that if if you are of the right mind for it, you know if you are or not. If you're like, I don't know about that, then it's probably not for you. But uh, if you like Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon, um, Star Wars, you know, Star Wars, I shouldn't say Star Wars because Star Wars is the gold standard. It's really the stuff that came out after Star Wars chasing it because uh, so, it's not it's not up to the snuff of Star Wars. But I will say, let's try to find some shots of some spaceships because they got, let me go to a, a late issue and see if I can find some shots of spaceships because the spaceships in this are absolutely beautiful i have an appreciation yeah right there right out of the gate that's a spaceship like look at that space station i have such an appreciation for like 70s like late 70s spaceships 80s spaceships look at this like that is awesome to me um that's that's the kind of stuff that i love so again you know if this is up like if it's appealing to you or not i am really happy that i found this i think i found the first 13 issues, I think it was, uh, in a 50 cent bin at Atlanta Comic Con, and I was super grateful to find them, and then I just finished the run via my comic shop. Um, so I'm going to cut back to uh, a wide shot so we can wrap up, but that's it, you guys, that's Atari Force, and I think it is pretty great. So that's it, guys, that's that's my thoughts on Atari Force. I think it's a really cool title, had some really cool writing behind it, and it, it's crazy to me that it still exists. All these years later, like it's never been gone back. I mean, because of Atari and everything, I get it. But like, it's it's here. It's like perfectly preserved. It's never been bled over into anything else. Um, it's just this little snapshot into time. This uh, window into comics of the mid '80s. It lived. It died. 
and it has stayed there. It has stayed in the grave. And that's just so interesting to me in a world where we're constantly rebooting things, like going back to older properties. Maybe you're watching this in the year 2026 and there's been an Atari Force movie. <laughs> I don't know. I doubt it, but that would be very interesting. Uh, but you know, I picked all these up in 50 cent bins and I'm really glad that I did. Not all of them. I had to get some of them through um, uh, a, a, an online service. Mycomicshop.com. That's who I use uh, for all my back issues. That's Atari Force. I would love to know your thoughts on the series if you've read it or if it's interesting to you. Just let's, let's talk about Atari Force, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, I, thanks for your time. Thanks for hanging out. You got any thoughts about Atari? Do you miss Atari? Uh, <laughs> do you miss Missile Command? I don't know. Uh, but really, no, thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you guys so much. And I will catch you later.